Hi, I'm Leslie with Art Insights Animation and Film Art Gallery. Check out this interview with my friend and cinema movie poster artist John Alvin as part of our tribute show of original artwork at my art gallery. We love you, John. And once in a while, you're dealing with very talented, very intelligent creative directors who understand the film that they're marketing. Mm -hmm. And they understand nice. their audience and they say, we've got to use what you can do, because I know what you can do, they're saying that to me, to get this to happen for this group over here. And jokingly, some of, some of my clients started calling it alvinizing. Get, get John in here, because we have to alvinize this. Now, what that really meant, and, and, and I never knew what it meant. I went, okay, you know, and I gave it a shot. What it was was I was trying to use technique and, 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 uh, and artwork to provide a sense of almost mysticism or magic. Mm -hmm. And that's done, the visual tools for that, I mean, you can't have a little label to say, this is mystic and this is magic. I mean, I wish you could. But you need to use light and atmosphere in a heavy and in a way that influences the characters that are, that are concealed in it or revealed by it. And, and there are ways to do that. And, and as though some unexplained mist always rises from somewhere, and that, that it envelops some character in some way, or invites you to be swept away in the adventure that that character's in. And that, to me, was alvinizing. That's, that was my almost naive look at the energies in the world and, and, and the way things and people and moments would relate. And, and, and it's like including the person that's looking at the art. Yes, it's it's art. it's asking that's you. That's exactly what it seems it, to be it, doing. It's sort of my it. my version of N. C. Wyeth wanting to invite the viewer in. Now he he, he did it, he did it a different way. I want to do it in those those moments that we've all had, maybe when we were kids and we kind of squinted at something and we kind of imagined something there that isn't there. But in that moment that we did that, it it took us to that special place that we needed to be, that special thing we needed to feel. Well, I'm kind of trying to do that, and I'm saying trying because it doesn't always work. I mean, sometimes this looks like well, it's kind of like kind of heavy paint. It's kind of odd or whatever, and I'm looking for something that that well. You and I have talked before. Where where I, I understand that Steven Spielberg likes to make movies as though he's sitting in front row with popcorn looking up at this. And th that's what he wants to lay up there on the screen for us. Well, I want, he enjoys. I want to put on the artwork something that I want to be drawn into. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of trying to be my audience and, 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 and what draws me in at the same time. And there's, there's this some little sort of timeless abstract moment in relationship between me and the artwork that is ultimately translated between the viewer and the artwork. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know what and that the is. I, the movie. I mean, a friend of mine says, yep, that's what they call it art. You know, because there's something, there's something about that. that it, it's, like, it's like we all share something. And I'm almost looking for the abstract variant of that. If there was something tangible or tactile, if you force. could pixie dust, yeah. whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever it is, uh, that was, that was the, the alvinizing that I was doing on things. You can see it in some of the new work, just maybe in the quality of light, or something. Where where well, you're being technical, but there's all I, because you mm -hmm. have to reduce it to that. Because er, I was wondering, you know, it seems like if you say there are things that get bogged down in color or in mm -hmm. muddy or whatever, that stuff doesn't. I haven't seen any of that, because everything I see from you <laughs> that comes in here or that I've seen in the posters that you've done, all that is the you're exactly right. That's the one thing is that you feel connected to the movie. Without even cognitively understanding that's what's happening, you you've brought them into that. You're like making the person looking at it become part of well, the of the it, art. Well, it, that started at least as a conscious effort for me with uh, early works that I did on anything I did the poster a poster for Steven Spielberg, and, and I was I was very fortunate to do the all of the posters for E.T. all all the variants on them, uh, including an advance poster that was just the lights from the ship coming down through the clouds. You couldn't even see the ship. Yeah, cool. But the lights through the clouds, the light off the tip of the finger or the slight halo around the earth, the underlight on the hands of the, of, mm -hmm. the, of the little sweet alien and of the human hand, which by the way was my daughter's hand that I posed for that in, in E.T. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when she was much younger. And um, I noticed in Spielberg's films what I like to call thick light. He did it in Close Encounters when yeah, totally. what, what, he, would, he would hide things from us in the light. Well, hiding in the light is like, wait, no, no, you hide in the dark. No, 
he would hide in the light. And the light that he would use, or the flare, or whatever would prevent us from really staring directly at the subject, yet we could see everything that was going on, that light, I found if I tried to mimic that, I tried to draw that into a piece of artwork, I tried to, I tried to, to use an, an airbrush as, as, not as a means of painting, but as a means of elevating something that's already there. Let the light fall very thick. Let it, let it fall like it almost weighs something. And that seemed to bring about, um, that seemed to invite that far away sort of mood. That seemed to invite, you don't see people walking around with heavy light on them. Mm -hmm. But if you see it, you still recognize it, that that light is bright. Not a threatening light, it's just bright. It's so bright because they are good, or it's so bright because they are bad, or it's so good because we are supposed to know something not only about them, but about ourselves. And that's a, that's a conscious effort. I still explore that. You can see it in some of the newer stuff where no one's telling me what to do, which I love, that no one's telling me what to do. Uh, but that's inherent in that is a very difficult demand on myself. That means I have to produce what you would like to see. And also what's good enough for only you. It's, yeah. It's and so there, there's, there's another set of demands there. I don't mind that. I, I enjoy, I, I know as an artist and a creative person, I'm supposed to say, well, that's my challenge. I'm not so certain that challenge is part of the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not so certain that, that, it, that it's like some daredevil sort of thing that I have to prove every time. I am certain that there is a, there is a language, an unwritten language that must be a picture because it can't be anything else, and that's why I think art exists. Uh, and it may not be measurable, you may not be able to calculate it, describe it, do it, or even repeat it, but it exists on some plane between the viewer and, and, and the surface. And, and I, I like to live there, I like to live in that ethereal place.